This is Robin Klim, Child Study Team Supervisor for the School District, going over Module 7, Assessment Screening for Reading Difficulties. Please keep in mind the common warning signs of dyslexia are applicable to look for pre-K through second grade. Some of the signs will be evident for six months or more. Language, learning the alphabet, numbers, and days of the week, naming people and objects, speaking precisely and using a varied age-appropriate vocabulary, staying on topic, getting or staying interested in stories and books, learning to speak. You may see a delay compared to other peers in the classroom, understanding the relationship between the speaker and the listener, pronouncing words correctly such as magazine instead of magazine, so you will see a flip in sometimes two letters in the word, learning and correctly using new vocabulary words, distinguishing words from other words that sound similar, rhyming words, understanding instructions and directions, and repeating what has been said. Continuing on through reading, you will see a difficulty or a warning sign with naming letters, recognizing letters, matching letters to sounds, and blending sounds when speaking, learning to read as expected for his or her age, Associating letters with sound, understanding the difference between sounds and words, accurately blending letter sounds within words, recognizing and remembering sight words, remembering printed words, distinguishing between letters and words that look similar, learning and remembering new vocabulary words, keeping one's place and not skipping over words while reading, and showing confidence and interest in reading. Continuing on with writing. You may see this, the following warning signs. Learning to copy and write at an age-appropriate level. Writing letters, numbers, and symbols in the correct order. Spelling words correctly and consistently most of the time. Proofreading and correcting written work. For social and emotional, this child may experience difficulty making and keeping friends. Interpreting people's nonverbal cues such as body language and tone of voice and being motivated and self-confident about their learning. Some other warning signs might be an indicator of dyslexia include a sense of direction and spatial concepts, such as left to right, performing consistently on tasks from day to day. So please be mindful that all of the signs I just reviewed are evident for six months or more. Moving on to assessment driving classroom supports, Ideally, screening and assessment results um, provide a basis for making instructional decisions and help determine which educational supports will be the most effective in the classrooms for our students. Screening and assessment results are also used to determine level of intervention services the child may require. The screening is a pretty comprehensive process. The dyslexia screening test is very general um, in the questions that it asks. Being screened to take the comprehensive test does not necessarily mean a person has dyslexia. A number of other conditions could be existing that would prevent someone from passing through the screening process. The questions on a dyslexia screening test are very general, meaning that a person could have some type of comorbid issue coming into play in the classroom, such as ADHD, a delay in their learning, or even autism. The important thing is that We've been made known of these comorbid issues that are existing in the classroom, and the screening process is simply noting that additional testing should be done. What's included in an evaluation? A dyslexia screening is not the same as a comprehensive test. Comprehensive tests are used to determine what type of dyslexia a person may have and at what severity. This is also a misnomer, as there is currently no single test for this but instead a series of tests that would be helpful to pin down the type and severity. There could be as many as 12 tests used to determine this. It really requires a multidisciplinary team. Assessments. The tests and procedures used will vary according to the age of the student and the presenting problem. Testing with young children often looks at phonological processing, receptive and expressive language abilities, and the ability to make sound symbol associations. A diagnosis of dyslexia does not have to be made in order to offer intervention in reading instruction in the general education classroom. It's important for teachers to collect data on observations of warning signs of reading difficulties. Be aware of issues that may manifest if struggling readers are not given appropriate supports. 
Don't mistake the unmotivated student for having behavioral difficulties when they have reading difficulties. I'm going to show you a video clip now so that you may experience what it is like for the struggling learner in the classroom to have dyslexia. Take data on the warning signs that will aid in screenings and referral for a comprehensive assessment. Seek consult of those around you. Diagnoses require a multidisciplinary team. Remember the importance of following least restrictive environment. The Individuals with Disabilities Act require that all children with disabilities must be educated in the least restrictive environment that is appropriate for them. The spirit of this requirement is to ensure that children are not unnecessarily removed from the regular education classroom setting or isolated from their non-disabled peers. Least restrictive decisions are made on a basis of child learning needs and may vary from child to child. IDEA does require that schools provide a full continuum of services ranging from regular classrooms with support to special ed programming. It is important to utilize the professional supports available to you when you are concerned about a student. There must be a substantial educational impact, well documented through data and frequency and duration of strategies tried prior to referral for a screening.